Hello, uh, my name is Gary Scudder. I'm a professor here in the Core Division. Uh, and today I want to talk about an assignment that I use in Core 110 really early in the semester. By definition, and you can also use it in Core 130, the Summer Bridge. I've also used it in Core 220, Aesthetic Expression, but it's mainly uh, Core 110, Concepts of the Self, freshman level thing. A uh, quick little backstory. Uh, I was in New Orleans at a conference with the excellent uh, Steve Waymeyer, and he was off doing whatever Waymeyer does in New Orleans, which we don't really want to know about. And I was left to my own devices, and I was walking through the French Quarter, and I came across this obscure little art gallery. And I was taken by one particular picture. Uh, it's a picture, I will not tell you the name of it yet, by this artist named O'Neill. It's the O'Neill Gallery. And I, would, and I stood there in the sweltering July heat in New Orleans, transfixed by this, mainly because of the potential, I thought, that it gave for doing something really unique in class. So I actually got, went and got Waymire, and we came back to the same gallery and sat there for like 45 minutes in the sweltering heat discussing this. Um, and I would tell this story to my students because I always think it's, it's good to casually... Um, and without comment and unapologetically revel in your nerddom. Uh, the point is, I always tell them, you know, I just never get shut off. So, uh, what I'd like to do is pan around to the screen itself. Again, my excellent assistant, uh, Cindy Linney Riefenstahl Brandenburg, is helping me today. Okay. This is a painting that Steve and I found in this obscure little gallery in New Orleans, and we've decided this is the definitive Champlain core picture. We eventually want to buy a copy of it and frame it and hang it um, downstairs someplace. So what I do is I show my students in Core 110 this picture at the beginning, and I don't give them the title. And I say, okay, you have about five minutes to analyze this painting and tell me what you think of it. Do you like this painting? What is going on? And the first thing I bring up with them is that, you know, this is really not that good of a painting. I mean, it's not bad, but this is not something which is ever going to be in an art gallery. Nevertheless, it's kind of provocative. It's evocative. It makes you think. And my students will literally spend a long time talking about this. And I remember one student one time getting really exasperated. He goes, well, there must be something there. We've just argued about this for a bloody half hour. And my point is then, you know, therefore, in your self-portrait, you don't have to be a great artist to create something which is really evocative. So I give the students about five minutes and I say, okay, what is going on here? And they came up with a lot of answers. Some of them are silly. Some of them are kind of deep. They get into big arguments about whether or not this is actually a robe or a man's shirt. They get into the fact of what kind of drink is this. Usually Cosmo is a very popular choice. Does that matter? The significance of the fact that you have the plugs there, but nothing is plugged in. There's nothing there. Does that mean it's a hotel room? What about the high heels? So sometimes it's very sexual in their read of it, and sometimes it's just very sad. Uh, about half the students miss the fact that she's actually talking on the phone. Uh, and the other half of them, they're like, what? And they'll actually get out of their seat and go up to get a closer look of this. So they have all these theories about why. Then what happens is I show them the next screen, so you can keep it here. And that is the title, which is Making the First Move. And I say, okay, and you've got two more minutes. Does it matter now that you know the title? And then they have another two minutes to, argue, to write stuff down. Then we have another argument. And some of them will still stay in a very dark place. No, oh, she's calling the suicide helpline. Uh, she's calling her lover's wife. Uh, she's calling AA. Or some of them will say, so this is just like a booty call. This is essentially just a booty call. And then we sort of let it go. We have this big discussion about what is going on and the significance. I'll talk about that in just one minute. Now, before I go any further, I want to point out that for the first time ever this semester, we actually had a student homage to making the first move. One of the students actually said, I'm specifically doing an homage to this, but with her own sort of spin on it. So this painting 
has taken on a life of its own. Now I want to say a few last words. So the question then becomes, so what do I do with this? Well, a couple of different things that are very interesting about this. One, again, the fact that it's not really a good painting, but you don't have to be a great artist to create something which is very evocative. We also talk about the fact that does it matter that their definition was different before they knew the title and after they knew the title? Uh, I often then will show them a Jackson Pollock painting and do exactly the same thing. Does that actually should it matter? And has the artist failed that I have to give you the title? Should it be so self-evident that the title is not something you should ever have to include? But the really important thing I want to get to them is the fact that they inevitably create a more interesting narrative for her than the painting is actually probably about. If it truly is making the first move and it's just nothing more than a booty call. But students left at their own devices create this amazingly rich series of narratives, which we then revisit again and again throughout the semester. We talk about Lyndon and the brain's desire, not desire, necessity to create a narrative. We talked about Freeland in the art book and the notion of this battle for control of the narrative, that I as the artist want to impose my narrative on my subject who is trying to give me her narrative. But in the end, we both lose because the audience, long after we're dead, gets to impose their own narrative. So we get to bring in Lyndon, we get to bring in Freeland, and again, the students like this so much, they're literally doing versions of it in their self-portrait. So again, I used this in 110, it's worked very well, I know Waymire uses it as well. Uh, I'm happy to talk more about this, and that's what I have for today. Thank you.